Okay, let's now talk about entering text into a document. If the document is blank, like mine is here, then you can just start typing. This little k blinking line that is on my document is my cursor, and that is where the text is going to go. So if I start typing, it's going to go ahead and it's just going to move forward from there. Now let's say that I have existing text like I do right now, and I want to, to enter more text in a different point of it. Maybe I want to have some text between the word just and start. Okay, So I'm going to just click at that point, and it moves my cursor to the insertion point. And now I'm going to say, put your hands on the keyboard and start typing. So you can see that was pushing my existing text to the right and inserting new text at that point. Now, one thing, and this may seem basic to any of you that have used a, a word processor in the past, but it is uh, something that I see quite often uh, students not knowing yet, and it's a holdover from typewriters. Uh, there's a lot of, of little errors that people make with Word that are holdovers from when we used to work with typewriters before computers. Um, and one of those is pressing return at the end of every line. When you're typing text in Word, and you reach the end of a line, the text will automatically wrap to the next line. So, as it was reaching the end of these lines, I did not press return one time. I just kept on typing and it dropped down to the next line. You do not want to press return at the end of a line. The place you would want to press return would be at the end of a paragraph. So if I now wanted to end this paragraph and start a new one, I would press return. And now it is ready for me to begin my new paragraph. So again, no returns at the end of a line, return at the end of a paragraph. Now, let's talk about deleting or selecting and editing text. The way that I delete text is by pressing delete on my keyboard. Now, delete on the keyboard will delete to the left. So, if I just press delete now, you can see that every time I tap it, it goes one more to the left. Let me go ahead and put that back. If I want to delete to the right, all I do is function and delete. The function key is an FN, and it's in the lower left of your keyboard. If I come here and I just put my cursor here before the word then and hold down function and delete, you'll see that every time I tap delete while holding function, it deletes to the right. I can also delete by selecting the text that I want to delete. Now, selecting text is one of the most important things to be able to do successfully in Word. So I'm going to show you several different ways to select text. One way to select text is just to click and drag. So I can come and click before the word reach and drag over here to the word line, and you'll see that it has selected that text. Now, if I were to press delete on my keyboard at this point, that text is going to go away. Now, I want to put that text back, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a, of a uh, tangent, and I'm going to tell you about another one of the most useful things in Word, and that is undo. So I want that text to go back. I want to undo my last action. That button is right up here in my toolbar. It's this little curved orange arrow that's curling to the left. If I click on that, you'll see it undoes that and puts things back the way it was. Now, conversely, just to the right of that, I have a little curved blue arrow. If I click that, it redoes what I just undid. So now I just put that back where it's gone again. I also can get to undo by going up to the edit menu. And you can see here's undo right here. And a keyboard shortcut for undo is command Z. This is one of the most useful keyboard shortcuts to, to memorize. So I would definitely recommend it. Command Z is undo in most applications, not just Word. So memorizing command Z will, will come in very handy. So I'm going to go ahead and just click here, and you'll see that it undoes that I deleted that and things are back again. Now, if I want to undo more than one step, I can put my cursor up here on that little arrow, and you can see just to the right of that is a separate button with a little black arrow pointing down. If 
I click on that, I've got all the steps I've done and I can go down as many as I want and undo all of them at the same time. Redo is the same. And click on that and redo a certain amount of actions at one time. So that's undo and redo, very useful, uh, and I would take some time practice with them. Okay, so back to selecting. We talked about clicking and dragging to select, and that is one very useful way to select. I can also select by double clicking a word, and that will select the entire word. So I double click keyboard, and there it is. Double click automatically, and there it is. If I triple click, it selects an entire paragraph. So you'll see how that selected all that section but left this one here alone. Okay, so triple click is going to select an entire paragraph. If I want to select everything, select all my text at once, I can come up here to edit and there's one that says select all. The keyboard shortcut for that is command A, also a pretty useful one to memorize. If I click that, you'll see that now all of my text is selected. Now, like I said, once I've selected text, I can hit delete to delete it, but I can also just start typing to replace it, okay? If I want to change new paragraph to new block of text, I can double click paragraph so it's selected, and then just type block of text. And now it, that replaced the word paragraph rather than having to delete paragraph and then start typing to replace it. One last thing. The text that we've been entering all shows up on this display, but I've been pressing buttons that don't show up as text. For example, I pressed return to get that new line. I pressed the space bar to get the spaces between the, the words. And they don't show up as an actual character on my page, but sometimes it's useful to see those things. So we have a button right up here in the toolbar. It's this little black, looks like a backwards P sort of. That's actually a paragraph mark. This is for showing what are called non-printing characters. If I click on that, you can see that now I can see a little blue mark at the places where I pressed return. Now it's probably too small to see on the recording, but if you do this on your own computers, you'll see that I also see a tiny blue dot everywhere I press the spacebar. This allows me to see tabs, um, page breaks, other things that we'll be learning as we go through these videos that don't actually show up uh, otherwise. So we'll use this as we go through the videos just to demonstrate how certain things are working. But just understand that's the button right here in the toolbar. And if I click that again, it will hide those non-printing characters and look more the way that I'm used to.